people have attempted, you know, historically in our profession to deal with these problems, you know, problems of, of mystery uh, in the profession. And just a couple of examples, you know, Wilhelm Wundt, you know, in, in uh, 18, from 1832 uh, to 1920 was a psychologist, a scientist who uh, tried to describe this observer object relationship, you know, by, by devising a set of experiences that uh that deal with uh the internal experience of, of the observer so he he tried to map out inner experience um, using a scientific method early on uh in regards to religion and mystery uh religion the discussion of religion and spirituality in this profession early on and i remember these days it was somewhat taboo you know, so you really didn't bring up religion and spirituality all that much. Uh, in fact, if you did, uh, it, it could have been considered a little risky in terms of ethics. This is a, a long time ago. I remember these days, though. I can remember these days, uh, you know, when, when any discussion around spirituality and religion was kind of dicey. And uh, if you were doing a spiritual and re religious assessment, uh, the basic question was, what denomination do you belong to? You know, and that was pretty much the extent of it. And a lot of the reason why there was uh, caution uh, and, you know, around approaching spirituality and religion, a lot of the reason why there was some, in some areas, taboo around it was because of uh, Sigmund Freud and his attitude towards religion and spirituality. So here he describes religion as a system of delusions, basically wishful illusions together with a disavowal of reality. In other words, you know, it's a delusional system such as we find nowhere else, but in a state of blissful hallucinatory confusion and a lot of people today, I think are in states of blissful hallucinatory confusion sometimes, you know, but uh, religion's 11th commandment is uh, thou shalt not question. So Freud was not, not into religion at all. You know, some of the people who broke with him, like Carl Jung, uh, Adler to some extent, uh, and uh, Eric Erickson, you know, had a, had a kinder, softer uh, approach to spirituality and religion. But, but as you know, Freud and uh, psychoanalysis in the early days set the standard for uh, early development in the profession. And then you have B.F. Skinner, you know, science, not religion, has taught me my most useful values among them, intellectual honesty. It's better to go without answers than to accept those that merely resolve puzzlement. And uh, I did not direct my life. I did not design it. I never made decisions. You know, things always came up and made them for me. That's what life is. So Freud was a biological determinist. You know, so if you're asking questions, you know, in the realm of spirituality about things like, is there such a thing as human freedom? You know, well, for Freud, we were biologically determined and our template was set by the age five, you know, seven at the latest in his early developmental theory of psychosexual development. That was where the, the, uh, the game was, uh, was uh, the rules for the game were written. Uh, so he was a biological determinist, you know, uh, Skinner was a radical behaviorist, you know, a radical behaviorist. So, so Skinner, uh, I used to see him he was alive when I worked at the Cambridge Hospital. We used to see him walk into the behavioral science building. His lab was on the 13th floor. His pigeon boxes were still there. Uh, but, um, but his view uh, was, was based on you know, his theory of operational uh, conditioning. And that, that, was, that was the way he viewed the world. Everything was the result of conditioning. Uh, for, for a radical behaviorist like Skinner, uh, in fact, he said this, uh, there is no such thing as thought. There's no such thing as, uh, you know, romance or poetry or, or possibly even love, you know, that that's not the result of conditioning. In fact, uh, in regards to thought, he once said that he would not be considered one of the world's greatest thinkers because there's no such thing as thought, you know, so, so. You know, these kinds of uh, uh, perspectives from some of the great uh, names in our in our field and in the profession have influenced the way in which we have approached uh, religion and spirituality in our practice. Now, when we look at the data, 
you know, uh, it's all over the place, really, about uh, spirituality and religion. In America, the slide indicates here there was a there was a uh, strong interest that emerged in uh, in spirituality and religion after World War II. So polls indicated that most Americans identified themselves as either spiritual or religious. Many people identified with some form of a higher power. Uh, there's some evidence then that people who see counseling expect their spiritual and religious concerns to be taken into account. Well, why was this after World War II? Well, if you remember, uh, you know, we just mentioned Freud, we mentioned Skinner. Uh, after World War II, uh, the, uh, the humanistic approaches in our profession became very, very, very uh, popular. So you had people both in existentialism and, and humanism uh, dealing with the nature of human existence. Why? Because World War II freaked people out globally. Uh, not only was there massive destruction, not only was the capability of, of um, our, our, our capability, our, you know, the possibility of violence and, and the capability that we had for, uh, for destruction globally apparent, but there were also two bombs that were dropped on Japan, you know, that really blew people's minds and people began to, uh, uh, it was just really, you know, astonishing and, and, and uh, terribly frightening, you know, with the anniversary of Hiroshima, there, there have been published accounts recently of survivors and, and, uh, but globally, you know, this kind of uh, pushed philosophy and our profession uh, into the realm of humanism and uh, existentialism, where people began asking two questions, you know, what is it, what is the meaning of life, of human existence, uh, a deeply spiritual and, you know, somewhat religious question, uh, does it have any meaning if we're capable of destroying ourselves in this way? And then secondly, if we're capable of such mass destruction of human beings, uh, what does it mean to be a person? You know, what, what is the nature of personhood? And of course, people like Viktor Frankl, you know, in his experience in the concentration camp, uh, talked about the gradual stripping of everything that was meaningful to him. Uh, everything that was meaningful to him was taken away until the only thing that was left was his integrity and his dignity as a human being, you know, in his, in his famous book, Man's Search for Meaning, which you know, they will never probably take the man out of that title, but, uh, but, but, but his, uh, his experience in a concentration camp is sort of a metaphor for how people saw existence during those years. And then of course you have Carl Rogers, you know, the great humanist, the great uh, humanist who, who made a uh, personal relationship, the foundation of the counseling method. So just about everything that we do in terms of skills, you know, reflection, summarization, uh, empathic, unconditional, positive regard, all of these things that we practice, they're all a result of this period, you know, and of the work of these people, especially Rogers, uh, who, who valued, you know, uh, the individual, the, the person, uh, and affirmed, you know, personhood. I'll never forget when I was a sophomore in college reading On Becoming a Person. That was one of the books, a critical experience that changed my life, you know, and a uh, powerful book. Myself and my classmates used to sit around talking about it. We used to imitate him. We, we used to listen to his tapes and then practice that reflective style of his, you know, uh, because it was exciting. It was exciting to have this strong affirmation of, of personhood, you know, of individuality and community. But, but the recognition of, of a deep identity as a human person, you know, came from the work of these people. It's pretty amazing when you think of it.